Hi, I'm Susan Scoggins. I'm a speech pathologist with Houston Area Parkinson's Society, and this is another video to, of speech, and we're working on breath support, voice, uh, strength of voice, swallowing, and uh, we, at the end, we do a little bit of a cognitive exercise. So w welcome, and I'm glad you are able to join me. Our first exercise that we do is to work on breath support. We have six lobes, uh, upper, mid, and lower lobes of our lungs. Um, and so what we want to do is we want to take a big deep breath and we want to sustain an ah sound and hold it as long as possible. I hold it for 20 seconds. If you want to hold it longer, of course, you're welcome to do that. But purpose of the exercise is to strengthen the, the breath support that is needed for good, strong voice. So if we take a big deep breath right here and we start, uh, Good. All right, take a couple of breaths here, stop the video, and do it about four or five more times. These are great exercises to do every day. And let's get started with the next exercise, which is a high-pitched E. We'll do five of these, one right after another. We'll hold it for three to five seconds, and the purpose of this is when we do an E sound, the larynx goes up, it tilts a little bit forward, the vocal cords stretch a little bit uh, thinner, and it's also the same muscles that are needed for swallowing. It's the superior laryngeal muscles that lift the larynx up. So here we go. We're going to do about five of them, one right after another, and we're holding them for three to five seconds. Here we go. Again. 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 Great, so that was about five. Do that about 10 times. <clears throat> it's a very good exercise for swallowing and for uh, the inflections in the voice that we use when we're talking. We do have, when we're saying, asking a question, we go up at the end of a sentence. Or, and then when we are just making a statement, we, go, we drop down. But we want to try to deter the monotone voice that Parkinson's patients uh, usually develop. Okay, another exercise that we do, and this is for swallowing, it's to stick the, your tongue out between your teeth and your lips, anchor it, and swallow. Now normally our tongue goes back to swallow and it hits that posterior pharyngeal wall, that wall that's back there, and it's part of a valving system. Well here you've got it forward, so this wall, the muscle, is going to have to work to meet the uh, back of the tongue. So you stick your tongue out, I'll get a little closer, and then you swallow. Okay, and try that about three or four more times. Sometimes you'll need to take a sip of water, do a normal swallow, then there's residuals in the mouth that you can swallow again, and it will be, um, uh, it'll be easier if you have a sip of water, and, and, but don't swallow the water doing this. This is very important that you have a dry swallow. So I'll do it again. And if you can, try to work uh, your way where your tongue is extended even further because that's gonna make that wall work a little harder. So stop the video and do that about five times. Okay, now let's try the, uh, the Mendelssohn. That was the Masako that we had just done. Now the Mendelssohn is where we stop in the middle of the swallow and we hold our breath. And the purpose of this one is when you swallow those superior laryngeal muscles that we had worked on earlier with the high pitched E sound, they're lifting the larynx up. When it lifts the larynx up, there's a bone here that's called the hyoid bone, which goes up and towards the chin. When it goes up and towards the chin, it helps um, uh, uh, flip the epiglottis over, which is your air, which covers your airway. So when it covers your airway, you can't breathe because your airway has been stopped by this epiglottis. But then the food and liquid um, slides off, opens up with the upper esophageal sphincter, and because this is flat, it opens up and it draws in. And we need to have that change in air pressure for that food and liquid to go down. It's kind of a pneumatic system. So with that, with this Mendelssohn, what we're doing is 
we are just doing a normal swallow, but we stop in the middle of it. And I'll do one, and you can kind of see the strain on my face because I'm not breathing. So I'm gonna do it, um, do a swallow right now. And then I release. And when you release, the air comes out um, because you were holding it underneath the epiglottis, so the air comes, it's an exhalation. And so uh, what this does is we're trying to get that epiglottis, the movement of the epiglottis flipping over and covering the airway, that hyoid bone to move up and towards the chin so that all the muscles that are involved, and there are deep muscles in the, in the neck that are, part of, that are part of swallowing, that, are need, that need to be, um, have their full amplitude or range of motion. So stop the video and do that about five times. And it's just a normal swallow and you're holding the swallow or holding your breath for about three to five seconds. Okay, so one of the other exercises, we've been working the very in interior muscles of the for swallowing. There's exterior muscles, which are the muscles that are out here. So this is the muscles uh, that uh, we use with voice patients and it's um, for, to enhance their voice, and we also use it to, um, for swallowing. So we're gonna do our chin to our right shoulder, and I want you to drop your left, and we'll hold for about 10 seconds, but I, ideally I'd like for you to hold for about 20 to 15 seconds, or uh, 20 to 25 seconds. And it, it, the purpose is to feel that stretch, to get this right side contracted, the left side stretched, now we're turning our head to the left shoulder, drop our right, and then what we want to do there is feel that sensation when this muscle that was contracted now stretching, this muscle here on the side that was stretched is now contracting. Okay, great, so that's about 10 seconds each. Right ear to right shoulder, drop your left, pull it back, so now, and then see if you can get your chin up to 10, uh, two o'clock position so you can stretch the muscles all the way down to the shoulder, but you wanna make sure you're pull, pushing that left shoulder back and try to hold for about 10 to 20 seconds. Then you're doing the left ear to left shoulder, drop your right shoulder, pull it back, chin to 10 o'clock, and we wanna see if we can get a good stretch from the chin all the way down to the shoulder. Again, ideally hold for at least 20 seconds. Chin to chest. And then what we're doing is we're stretching the muscles on either side of the cervical spine. Okay, great. So do those, it's, it's uh, chin to the right shoulder, chin to the left shoulder, right ear to right shoulder, right ear to left shoulder, and then chin to chest. So it's, you just wanna work all the muscles that are needed um, for good range of motion for moving your neck and also for swallowing. And it's also very good for voice. Uh, last one that we do in class um, is the oral motor exercises, and I'll just explain these two exercises. What we, a lot of times that we see with Parkinson's is the drooling, and that is uh, due to a reduced labial seal, uh, not monitoring the saliva that's in your mouth, um, and not swallowing enough times. We swallow thousands of times a day. And with Parkinson's, they don't have the uh, sensation of the need to swallow as often because of it's a, a, um, a motor function. So what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that our lips are sealed and that they're patent. So you want to, so to start off, I have everybody pucker and they pucker for 60 seconds. So what, I'm, I'm explaining the exercise. You pucker for 60 seconds, watch the clock. The last 10 seconds, pull tighter so that you can kind of fatigue the muscles, the orbicular source muscle, fatigue it a little bit. Then switch to a smile and you'll feel that sensation of those muscles that have been contracted. And you hold that for 60 seconds with the last 10 seconds pulling tighter. So stop the video and do that. Okay, so those are the exercises that we do in class. Um, we have a class on Thursday mornings, 10.30 to 11.30, and then, um, then we have the speech videos. So let's do some exercises on thinking. All right, first one, this exercise is our, our words, oh, sorry, my cat, it's gonna bother me. Um, so, these are words that originated in India. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a description and let's see if you can figure out what word, it, what they're talking about. It's a commonly used word in English and um, these words have been adapted or adopted by um, the English language and we use them every day, but they originated from India. So this is, first one is bedwear that's often flannel. Pajamas. A thin bracelet with no clasps, often worn in multiples. So you're wearing a bunch of these. What do you call those? It begins with a B. Bangles. Okay, let's do another one. A generic word for sweet treat. Candy. Okay. Actual money, not checks or credit cards. So you're paying in cash. Good. A folding bed, often used for unexpected guests. It's the word cot, C-O-T. Okay, in ancient India, it meant brother. In English, it's a slang word for friend. Pal, P-A-L. All right, next one is, what's another word for denim? Dungarees, okay. Uh, a common sweet citrus fruit. We, we, we have it almost every morning. Orange, yes. Okay, let's do the next one, which is, what do we call hair soap? Shampoo. All right, the next one is a humble little boat. What do we call a humble little boat? A dinghy. In Hindi, this means wasteland or desert, but in English, it's a dense, lush environment. Begins with a J. Jungle. Good. Now this is a tuxedo. Uh, when you wear a tuxedo, it's not complete unless it has this going around the waistband. It may have given you too much of a hint. A cummerbund. All right. And this is made from cane or beet. And it's a dieter's nemesis. Sugar, all right. And this porch is often found in the American South. A veranda. All right, wonderful. Well, thanks for participating with me in this class. Um, there's usually two a month that I have posted with the uh, HAPS. And it's if you're not part of HAPS and you just run across this video, it's Houston Area Parkinson Society. Uh, it's amazing. They have um, all kinds of uh, caregivers um, and seminars and all the classes are free to people with Parkinson's and um, they have a, they're a great resource. So if you go to hapsonline.org, you can find out all the classes they have that are online. Like there's um, um, Tai Chi, there's physical therapy, there's more speech therapy classes online. Um, I think they have uh, yoga and uh, quite a few others. Uh, it's amazing. So these are Zoom classes online. They do, and they have boxing, I think, and I, and they have them in person. Some of them are in person, and but the speech classes right now are all on online. And I do my class on Thursdays from ten thirty to eleven thirty. I look forward to seeing you on a Zoom class or again back with. Um, uh, a speech video. Okay, thank you.